Thank you, President, and um, and I welcome and thank thank um, thank you for having the opportunity to speak about a four-day work week trial. Now, we know during COVID we have been doing so many things differently. And for some of us, that's been a struggle. And I know for many people working from home or not having work at all has been um, really, really very difficult. But we have been doing things that have been working and we have learned how to work more flexibly. We've learned that we, we can work at home. We've learned that we can, you know, work out a bit of a work-life balance. Although those with small children or school-aged children would be probably struggling with what they, you know, um, what their, their new work-life balance actually is. But back in 2018, we, we looked at the research around more flexible working, and in particular, a four-day work week. Now, this is not a new idea. Um, but it's a good idea. And it's something that I think we should look at adopting as we come out of COVID, as we have learned to do things differently, as we have learned that there are other things in life other than just work. Um, maybe some of us in this chamber have not got that message, but many people, many people in society do they want to be able to walk their kids to school in the morning. They want to be able to be home to, to kick the ball in the evenings. But work generally precludes them. A four-day work week would enable that greater flexibility. And as the Parliamentary Budget Office has found, not only does it make more flexible and better working conditions for workers, it's cheaper. It saves money. Now, when you look at somewhere like, you know, and this is not something radical that just, you know, the, the social enterprises and the, the new ventures are doing. It's not something that um, just the IT companies are doing. One of the first companies to really trial this in, um, in great, um, in, in, in seriously, was actually an insurance company, Perpetual Guardian. Now, they trialled a four-day working week, and they, they thought, let's see how they go. They found that 78% of their employees said they were better able to manage their work-life balance. Um, there was a considerable drop in stress levels, and they, they had, they had their workers actually working less hours, but being more productive. So what we have suggested in this um, in this costing, and I, I encourage people to go to the Parliamentary Budget Office website. There's some really interesting work there. But on this, we ask them to consider what a four-day work week trial would look like in a discrete government department. Because we know often governments can provide the levers for the rest of society to pick up. So on this lever, we've asked them to look at and the Treasurer, I met with the Treasurer yesterday about this, and he was somewhat surprised because we'd chosen his department. And we said, how about a four-day week in the Treasury Department? This will save you, Treasurer, I assure you, at least $3.8 million a year. Now, this is, in actual fact, without anyone really going home with less money in their pay packet. But it means it has the flow-on effect that when someone is not working um, five days a week, that they can organise their, organise their life more easily around work. It means they might not all be starting at nine o'clock in the morning. And I know Mr Barton and I have a little fan club for Infrastructure Victoria, and in particular Michelle. And he has told us, he said, Fiona, infrastructure is not necessarily about building, it's just about management. And if 15% of people did not start work at 9am, we would not need another tram. We may not need another road. It could cons cons considerably improve our congestion. So in, this, in the work that the, pub, the, the, um, public, the Parliamentary Budget Office has done, they have looked at all of this and they have said that to, to provide a discrete trial 
in the, in the Treasury Department for 12 months, it would save the government $3.8 million. Now, I think we should be looking at for any innovative way that we can save money, but also at the same time improving people's lives and I think offering some roadmaps and some experience information for the employers and private sector.